Hey everyone, welcome back to Optimize Ebony. I wanted to do an episode today on the Military Academy and what I think is the best use of your tactic scrolls. Uh, tactic scrolls are not super easy to get. You need a ton of them to be able to max out all of the research. Um, and really the, the only way that you can get them for free in the game right now is Yimmers. Um, and and the, the various kind of battlefields and events and stuff like that. Uh, but each one of them gives them gives a very limited amount. Um, and as if you if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see like you know some of these just take an absurd amount of uh, an absurd amount of tactic scrolls, you know over over a thousand sixteen hundred um, for a single research. And so, uh, that is going to be probably more than one Yimmer day for you. Uh, probably, you know, uh, three or four, uh, which, so you, you really want to maximize, you know, kind of what, what you're doing in, in the military academy to get the best benefit for you. Uh, especially if you're not, you know, a huge coiner where you're going to be, where you have, you know, tens of thousands of tactic scrolls you know that you're running out of gold and speeds and stuff like that before you're running out of tactic scrolls uh, and the reason why i wanted to do this event today is because uh, for those of you that didn't notice for the past couple of days the tactics research event uh, the tactic scroll consumption event has been uh, ongoing uh, so this is basically where uh, at, you consume tactic scrolls and you're able to uh, obviously you know place you know there's ranking rewards ranking rewards aren't super great <laughs> these are not really the the main reason you would do this event uh, the main reason is that you can redeem more tactic scrolls so you basically get a discount uh, on the amount of tactic scrolls that your research uh, costs if you if you're able to redeem the the tactic scrolls, I think it's up to like 500 or something like that. Uh, so that's a that's a good chunk. Uh, it also gives you some treasure boxes if you're uh, if you're able to kind of get past that level, uh, and then you know some other some other good stuff here. But yeah, uh, before I get into which specific research I think is the is the best bang for your buck, I, I do want to again. Uh, say that uh, I am looking to uh, get a specific subscriber goal so I'm I'm getting very close to the number that I want to hit uh, but if you have been watching my videos and you have been enjoying the content please do uh, subscribe uh, because that'll help me hit that goal uh, and it will help me keep get, bringing out good content for for all of you so uh, with that being said let's get into it uh, there's in the military academy, there's a ton of good research. The the staggering buffs that you can get in the military academy are just insane. Um, you know, for example, let's take a look at just a single a single research when it's maxed out is 40%. You know, uh, buffs. Uh, these ones that that give you uh, alliance war buffs and defending buffs give you 30% when you're joining the Alliance War and 40% when you're defending. Uh, they're, they're, different, they're different types, right? This one's Mount Troop HP when joining the Alliance War and Mount Troop Defense when defending, but both of those are, are very important. And so you get kind of a combined 70% buffs there. Uh, and so you can very easily get a ton of buffs very quickly in the military academy. So if you've been if you've been seeing people with you know uh, attack buffs and defense buffs that are you know well well higher than what you're expecting to be, you know defense buffs that are every single stat is is well over a thousand. Uh, this is how people are doing that. And so um, there's kind of two different uh, important tracks on uh, on the military academy. There's basically research tech for people who like to solo a lot, who who attack by themselves, 
Um, and then there's tech that's really good for defending and, you know, kind of alliance war rally tech. Um, and so there's really good research for both of them, but you kind of need to know what you're going to be doing most of before you start get going on your tech. Because uh, if you if you mostly rally, then doing all the solo tech first doesn't really make sense uh, and, and vice versa. So uh, let's kind of get into talking about what the what that solo and uh, rally tech is. So basically, uh, what I consider the solo tech to be is any of the tech that is just straight up attacking buffs. So like these ones, uh, increase mount troop defense by 40% when attacking. Uh, that So to be clear, this does also apply on rallies, uh, but the reason why I would not recommend maxing these out right away if you're going to be primarily rallying is because there are better, there there is easier ways to get to be more effective with their tactic scrolls and get basically similar buffs, uh, but also additional buffs, uh, additional defense buffs if you're if you're primarily going to be rallying. So uh, this these ones are really good uh, solo buffs. And then I would say the 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 main thing for soloing is you want to get as many of these kind of big square the big the big research here. Uh, you want to get as many of these ones done as possible because these give uh, two different attack buffs and then a, a a debuff here. So and and these are all different for for the different kind of troop lanes. So for example, this is mount troop and range troop attack uh, by two, four, or six percent depending on the the current level, and then reducing enemy ground troop HP by ten. 20 and 30 percent uh, note that this this debuff is only when you're attacking so you will debuff you know for example at my current level I'll debuff 10 percent ground troop HP only when I'm attacking not when I'm defending not when I'm in a building not you know in in anything any other situation so uh, and that's that's why I'm saying this is basically very important for soloing. Uh, because one, it, it increases your your attack, which is great, uh, but then it also gives you additional debuffs. And I think that the additional debuffs are actually probably more important here, because it allows you to do uh, some more attacking without your subs and still being uh, very effective. So, uh, yeah. So. The, like I said, there's a different combination for kind of each each troop type. This one's ground troop and siege attack, and then it reduces range troop HP. Uh, the range troop one is range troop and mount troop attack, and then uh, enemy mount troop HP. Uh, so, for example, if you're a solo player, you really want to uh, max out this one and all of the ones kind of in the in the range troop attack uh, tree because getting enemy mount troop HP debuff is super super important. If you're if you're soloing with with archers, you really want to debuff uh, pretty much max uh, or as as much as you can of the enemy's mount troop HP because that'll that'll make those those calves very squishy and you'll be able to take out more of them with your with your solo. And then siege, the last one uh, is siege and ground troop attack, and then enemy siege HP. And this is this is also a really good one because there's not a good way besides maybe like one or two of the new uh, subgens that came out. There's not a good way to debuff siege HP or siege defense, and so. Uh, doing this re research gives you a little bit of a leg up, you know, for people who are who have like, you know, a ton of of siege a machine HP uh, when they're defending. You know, this will help cut that down a little bit. Um, and and another thing to note is that these are not always the same for each one. So, for example, this was 
siege and ground troop attack. And then this next one is siege and mount troop attack. Uh, really, you know, it's and then it's still doing the, the siege HP debuff. But uh, just, just take a look at those to make sure that that's kind of what, what you're looking to get from it. Um, usually it's, it is at least, you know, siege on, on the siege track, range on the range track, mount on the mount tra track, and ground on the ground track. But what it's paired against is, is, is slightly different per, per each one. So yeah, like I said, those are kind of the main things, um, for, uh, doing the, for, for if you're soloing. So doing these doing these attacking ones, so increasing ground troop defense, uh, and you know the ground troop HP when attacking, that one's big, and then doing these big ones. So because the reason why you're doing this is because, okay, this gives you 40%. Uh, let's look at kind of the next level of this. Uh, this will give you, it looks like maybe 60%. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not doing doing math super well here. Uh, forty five percent plus fifteen. Yeah, that should be sixty percent. Um, so this will be an extra sixty percent. So just with those two skills, that'll give you an extra sixty percent uh ground troop defense when you're attacking. So this is a very cost effective way to increase those, particularly when you're soloing. These do again apply when you're rallying, but there's just better better tech that you can do for these. And I, I actually wish I had done some of that instead of spent uh, a lot of tactics rolls and stuff like that on increasing these ones. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can you can change or you can focus on different things for different tech. So for example. I do a lot more soloing with ground than I do with, you know, uh, maybe mounts or siege. Uh, starting to do a little bit more soloing with siege, but I do I do solo with range, um, but range is still probably our primary rally type. Um, but ground is is has been more of a solo troop type for me, and so that is actually why I did spend a little bit more here in like the, the the solo troop tech because i do i do think that it is kind of worth it for for this um and the other thing to note here is that for for like between these two there is one that is more expensive and one that's cheaper so for example i believe the this one solid shield one was significantly cheaper in terms of tactic scrolls than piercing spear one for whatever reason you see this is like 82 i think this one at like a similar level was like 30 or maybe 40 so it was like half as expensive in terms of tactic scrolls um so you know if you're really trying to stretch and make your tactic scrolls go go farther uh do the ones that are going to give you the most so do this one don't don't do this one quite as much, uh, particularly because also ground troop HP is a lot easier to, to debuff than ground troop defense. So, you know, it's kind of self-built that way uh, where, you know, it's it, we're, it's already favoring this in terms of the tactics rolls and stuff like that. But you're also able to uh, to be more effective. So, uh, but yeah, then let's get into that was that was all for if you're a solo tech player that's those are the things that you're focusing on but if you're a rally player um i mean let's let's go to siege because i i use siege primarily for for rallying uh you can see that i didn't do really any any of this this research for uh soloing um and again, I probably should do some of it for for rally tech as well, uh, but I have been focused a little bit more on the the rally and defense buffs because I for a long long time I was very worried about siege siege uh, rallies, and I mean quite frankly I still am. They're 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 very damaging. So uh, getting those siege buffs, uh, particularly defense buffs up, are going to be you know very important. Um, so when you're when you're doing the rally buffs, uh, again, let's look at one of these. These are the kind of the kind of uh, skills that you're looking to 
to increase where you have you have a, a, a rally buff so in this case siege machine HP uh, and that increases it by 30% and then there's also a defending buff where it's increasing siege machine defense by 40% when defending and so these ones are way more cost effective when you're more of a rally player because when you're a rally player you're probably also going to be doing a, a decent amount of defending and i mean really everyone's going to be doing a lot of defending unless you're unless you're you know sir philip or you know some of the the super big whale accounts that don't really get attacked outside of like uh all stars you're going to be doing a lot of defending and so that's why these ones are so important is because you you notice like it's not super easy to get 40% you know defense buffs but this gives you it in a single research and so that's where your research your your you know defending buffs can can jump up quite quickly um, and so yeah i think for siege uh, defending against siege bombs i really like you know siege machine defense and siege machine hp as as a way of you know kind of protecting your your siege keeping them alive uh, you ideally have a decent amount of siege if you're getting siege, uh, but uh, you know also siege machine attack. But I I think I've just found that uh, siege machine defense and HP are a little bit more effective when you're trying to defend against uh, siege bombs. So, um, but yeah, that those give you a total combined of seventy percent buffs. As opposed to again, if we look at one of these ones, it's only 40%. So that gives you a, a lot more. And you know, if you're if you're soloing, you still need these defense buffs. So you're eventually going to do these. But you know, it, if you're soloing, definitely focus on the solo ones first. Uh, but if you're if you're a rally player, you want to do do these kind of ones that have both the uh, rally buffs and the defending buffs so let's look at which which specific research makes the most sense for rally buffs um, and i'll start with range because uh, most people do a lot of attacking with range and so probably the most important ones for range uh, are uh, I mean, this one's an easy one to get just because this one unlocks with Military Academy 1. Uh, but the probably the most important ones for range are going to be these ones, which, and this is pretty similar to pretty much across the board for rally buffs. The ones that give you troop attack and uh, troop HP when defending are going to be super important because an extra 30% range troop attack buffs uh is huge and this is only the the level one skill of this one so uh the next one i think is is like 45 or something like that so that'll give you a total of 75 percent buffs when you're joining the alliance war so that's a super easy way to increase those those range troop attack buffs make those those rallies just devastating you know if you're if everyone in your alliance increase their their range troop attack by you know 30, 50, you know, 75 percent. That's going to be devastating for for the enemy. So, um, and then also just having higher HP on defense on when you're defending is is super important, particularly as you have more troops because it just allows your troops stay alive a little bit longer. So yeah, uh, for range troop attack. Uh, a range uh, tree i really think that this one's kind of the most important one the annihilation one um and then there's you know the level two versions of these skills so like i said this is 45 percent here and then 60 percent when defending so the other one was uh i believe 40 percent when defending so combined this gives you an extra 100 percent uh range troop hp buff when you're defending so that's pretty important too range troop aren't super uh range troops can die quite quickly when you're when you're defending but still 
you know, having good HP and good defense skills there are going to keep them alive longer, not have them die to a, a range rally quite as easily or a siege rally quite as easily. Um, and then, yeah, like obviously once I get to this skill, I would also try and max this out because this is going to give you, uh, if I'm doing the, the math correctly, you know, 60% range troop attack when, when joining Alliance War and then a hundred percent range troop HP when defending. So an extra hundred percent. That's that's insane. Uh, of course, you know it, it gets very expensive. For level one, it's almost five hundred tactics rolls. Uh, so, you know, that's that's probably around one Yimmer day for me. So, it could do maybe two of these a, a week. Uh, in addition to you know the fact that it's you know getting quite expensive for the for the gold and the and the speed ups and stuff like that, uh, but yeah. So for range troop, that's kind of what I would focus on the attack buffs, uh, mount. Um, I'm I'm basically going to say the same thing, but for different reasons. Uh, mount when you're, I would recommend doing the skill this same similar skill first as well because it gives you mount troop HP, uh, and I'm sure most of you know mount troop HP is like one of the most important things you can have when you're defending because it'll keep your your calves alive longer. Uh, it'll protect you from soloing, uh, from range solos, and uh, you know it'll it, it's just like a really good overall thing to have, uh, e either if you're being soloed or if you're being rallied. Um, uh, granted, you know against a lot of rallies that are bigger rally size, you know, 30 million, 50 million rallies, like most people, unless you're, unless you're like 15 million or, or, or higher, you're probably going to lose most of your calves anyways, regardless of your buffs. But the, the nice thing about, about increasing these buffs is that it, it does help protect your other troops. So while your mounts will still mostly still die, they'll stay alive a little bit longer. And so less of your, you know, uh, range troops or your ground troops will, will die, uh, in that rally, uh, because, because they're protected for longer and they're able to get a, a few more rounds of attacking in. Um, so yeah, that one's, that one's super important. Uh, and of course, you know, this is also good for attacking because it gives you mount troop attack when you're joining the, the rally, uh, I really would not recommend doing any of these attacking monsters skills uh, unless you're you've really maxed everything out or you're really only focused on bosses. It's just, I mean, the, you can get the same you can get the same benefit from doing a different skill, right? So like this is one percent. Uh, troop attack when attacking monsters, and let's be honest, you're mostly attacking monsters with mounts so uh and you're you're probably mostly going to be doing them in rallies so again let's look at this one this one's 30 percent when you're joining an alliance war so you get 30 percent uh mount troop attack this is going to give you what i mean maybe this will give you like you know 40 percent 30 percent like it's but you're gonna still be spending all of these things, all of these tactics rolls, all this research, or I mean, all the speeds, all the gold on it, when you can basically get the same thing from from this. And this also gives you defense, uh, <laughs> troop attack, uh, or troop, you know, HP. Um, and you know, this is also only good on monsters. So it's it's I really don't think that it's super worthwhile. Um, I also this is cool like that you're that you're getting troop buffs when you're reinforcing but again unless you're like exclusively reinforcing it's it takes a it's it's an expensive skill and you know it's it's just not not something that i would prioritize because it's just it's just not it's not really it's not really typically going to turn the tide in a battle whereas like your solo buffs or your rally buffs or your defense buffs can actually do that. Um, and then there's there's also a lot of other uh, kind of 
random <laughs> random things in here like for example uh in here there's like holy place deserter capacity uh i mean that's cool but only if you do pvp on your on your own server outside of svs um and so that's like not super useful and again i would not spend any tactics rolls on this besides what you need to get to unlock the next level um and then you know in the siege this one these ones actually are decently important uh for example I, this one's not important at all uh the tr troop training capacity who cares you can you can train just a few more batches and get the same result uh not worth spending your your precious tactics rolls on this or your research you know speed ups or you know your gold um but some of them are so for example strike strike is a march size capacity increase so this is this is super important because it'll allow you to send more troops you know in in a in a particular march um and i mean it is expensive you know uh, this this is still at very low level i actually probably should increase this so that i can you know get up to the the 4 million you know march size or, or whatever most people have these days that uh that are level 40 um but you know for me buffs have have been more important than increasing the march size so uh, i'll eventually do this but uh not quite yet and then if you're a rally setter this one's super important if you're maxing out your rally size uh, and you ha you aren't able to increase your war hall or you're at a max war hall or whatnot uh, increasing this will help you get additional rallying capacity. So, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, this probably, this will probably get you 10% rallying capacity. So that, that can be, you know, almost as much as a, a level of the war hall, depending on kind of where you are. And then, you know, uh, of course there's, uh, there's level two versions and level three versions of this skill. This one's going to give you an extra 20% march size capacity and you know an extra 20 percent rallying capacity so these ones are super important uh but again unless you're unless you're 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 maxed on your rally size already uh i wouldn't do i wouldn't do this one you know as a priority just because the buffs are going to be so more important so much more important uh you know yes sending more tr troops at something is great but only if you have more troops to send. You know, you can have a level 40 war hall and if you only have like three people joining a rally, there's no way you're gonna max that. So uh, again, this is situational. If you're if you're in a really good alliance, if you have a lot of people joining your rallies and you're the main rally setter, absolutely do this one first because that's this one's gonna be more effective for you. If you can get an extra person or two in your rally, uh, and you know a, a couple million more more troops in your rally that's going to be way more important than than really your personal buffs um but you know other than that i would i would stick to kind of these these uh, uh these you know attacking and 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 defending buffs and i would also say again uh this one is a great one to do uh I, I really actually like all of the, the siege ones because uh, siege is so powerful on defending and also attacking, uh, particularly if you're doing siege rallies. Um, and if you're defending, I do I do really like this one where you, you're increasing the siege machine attack. Uh, and this one will go up to, it's a level two skill, so this will go up to 60%. Uh, siege machine attack when defending so i have an extra 33 percent that i can get here uh or actually no uh 36 percent uh increase that i can get here so uh this will probably be one of the ones that i'll do next uh the siege machine defense when attacking is not super important but uh this state defending is is super important so but yeah, that's that's kind of what I think uh, in terms of the uh, the priority here. As you can see, I haven't really prioritized a lot of these big skills just because they get just so expensive and like I don't do a ton of soloing, and so the the kind of attacking buffs there are not as important to 
uh, to what I'm doing as the the defending buffs. I mostly was beginning to prioritize these because of the defending buffs, uh, but also I mean the 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 alliance war buffs are super super important. I mean you can have people who who max this tech and have you know just crazy crazy stats for every single troop type. Uh, it used to be where where refines and uh, and like monarch gear made the biggest difference in in your buffs, and that's kind of that's kind of ended. It's really how much of this research have you done? Because you know I'm sure you guys have all seen reports where people's all everyone's buffs or every troop type's buff uh, is above a, a thousand when they're attacking, and then they'll have one that's at like two thousand or, or something like that. Uh, but you know that that basically means that without any refines going towards that troop type, they're still at a thousand uh, for for that uh, for that troop type, which is only possible because of this research and I mean also a lot of other factors, but primarily this this kind of research. So definitely don't don't sleep on this. If you're if you're an alliance that rallies a lot, prioritize the rally joining and defending buffs because they are the best bet for your money they are for sure going to give you the best return on your tactics scrolls your your gold your research speeds you know all of that uh and then you know of course this is a super good time to to do this because we are still in in the speed up consumption event as you can see i've yeah, i've maxed it out uh, actually doing a bunch of research and then it's also tactics uh, consumption so it's 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 a great great time to to be doing your military academy research so uh, yeah definitely definitely prioritize those those ones that I talked about and uh, I think that's all that I have for you today uh, thanks for watching and as always please like and subscribe it helps me out a ton and I'll see you in the next video